Hey, my name is Robert Garrett, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build and code this VEX Cortex robot. So if you're just a hobbyist, or you're a teacher, or a student, and you got one of these VEX Cortexes in, in the mail, maybe for Christmas, or maybe you're a robotics teacher and it came in, these, these robots can be a little bit confusing. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of some concepts of building it. I'm also going to show you how easy it is for a student to build it. And then I'm going to show you how to program the remote and just drive it so you can test your motors. And then finally, I'm going to show you the best software to download and then some basics of coding that software so you can get the robot to do things like move forward, move backwards, turn right, turn left take the arm and raise it and lower it and even open and close the claw. So prior to us building this robot, I had no experience with a VEX robot. I had never built one. I have never driven one with the remote control. I had never coded one. I literally was a newbie. I knew nothing about the VEX robot. Like, how do we open this? Jeez, there's a yeah. control. So what I did is we basically opened the box and laid all the pieces out on the table, every piece. And when it comes out of the box, there's no instructions. There's nothing that says do this here or do that there. And I like that. So what I did is I took my son Everett and his friend and we laid all the pieces out. And I basically told them they had one job for the day. Their job was to build a robot. They had to build the robot and it had to have four wheels, right? Two of the wheels had to have motors and it had to have an arm and a claw, right? That's all we asked them to do. And so it took them probably three hours because, I mean, literally they're having to take the screws and, and the Allens and, and tighten the screws themselves. And my child and his friend basically did this all by themselves. I guided and helped here and there when they had questions, but for the most part, if they had trouble, I told them to go look it up on YouTube. And so they got the robot completely built, and they built a pretty good one. I don't know if you can see it here in the image, but they you can see they put the four wheels, they put the motors, um, here's the battery, and here's the brain. They put a nice claw that goes up and down, and they attached it with gears. They also, the claw also opens and closes, as you can see. You can probably hear it too. So they did a really nice job with the robot. So once it was built, we needed to take the remote out, and we needed to kind of test. When I push forward, does the robot go forward? When I push backwards, does it do that? Does the claw go up and down and open and close? And so I let them drive it with the remote, and if you're a teacher in a robot cl robotics classroom, and this is the first time you've done something like this, I would really suggest first when they build it to just put them in a room, give them YouTube, and tell them just to figure it out. Give them some basic requirements though, like it's got to have four wheels, it's got to have an arm, and it's got to have a claw. Y you know, you may even want to start with it's just got to have four wheels and two motors, right? So that it'll just move. And once they kind of figure out how to build it, you know, I had to teach them about the sizes of Allen wrenches and how to tighten Allen wrenches and bolts. And so there was a, there were a lot of, there was a lot of learning that went into the process. But once they get the thing built and they can drive it, well, that's what I was going to say. Once they get it built, the next thing I would do is I would let them drive it with the remote, right? So they can just see that, hey, this thing I built from scratch, it came basically a bucket of bolts. Uh, is how it came, I can build it and I can make it move, right? It's a whole lot better than going to Walmart and just buying a remote control car that then you drive. They actually have to build it and come up with a concept for what they want it to look like. I mean, they can build a tank, they can build one that looks like this, they can build whatever they want. The pieces are there and they can make it look however they want it to look. It also gave them an idea about gears and cranks, how a small uh, gear is different from a big gear, stuff like that. So the first thing I would do if you're a teacher in a classroom is I would just have them simply build it, build the thing. 
I'm Everett. And I'm Jaden. And today we're going to build this Vex robot. And, one, and it's going to take them a while. Maybe take them two or three class periods if you're on 50 minute classes. Uh, the next thing I would do is I would give them the remote, this Vex remote, and I would just let them drive it. Just let them move it around and, and drive it. Once they've built it and driven it, then I would give them a challenge. So I'd set up a chair in the living room or in your classroom, wherever you are, and I would tell them they've got to figure out how to code it to drive around that chair, right? And so that means that they're going to have to code it somehow. And one of the things I, I discovered as we did this is VEX for their V5 and VEX for their IQ robots have a really good coding solution for the Mac. Uh, but for the Cortex, there really isn't one. So what we did is we used Boot Camp on the, la on the Mac laptop and we installed a partition with Windows on it. And the, the program that was the easiest to use was Robot C. And so you can Google Robot C. It's probably the most popular program that people use to program VEX robots. It was really easy to use and it has two versions of Robot C when you install it. One that uses lines of code and the other one that does block coding. So if you're an elementary teacher, you can let them block code it. If you're middle school or high school, you can let them block and line code it to figure out how to make it drive around that chair. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to go on Google and type in VEX Robotics. And it'll be the first search choice right here, VEX Robotics. And this is the VEX Robotics website. They've got four lines of robots, IQ, which are the plastic robots, V5, Cortex, and Pro. V5 has a little better brain. Cortex is the one we're using though. So click on Cortex. And then I want you to scroll to the bottom and you can see where it says VEX code download. Now, the VEX company has code for the IQ line, code for the V5 line, but they don't have any code for the Vortex. I mean, for the Cortex. So here are your choices for code that will code the Cortex robot. In my opinion, these three right here are not very good. The one that's really good though is Robot C. So click on Robot C and we're gonna download it. When you click on it, scroll to the bottom and go where here where it says Download for Windows EXE. Okay, so you wanna download and install it. All right, so when you are done downloading Robot C, you'll have two apps that are installed, this top one and this bottom one. The top one is if you want to use Robot C to do block coding, and the bottom one is if you want to use Robot C to do uh, lines of code. So I'm going to open this app right here, the bottom one for lines of code. And the first thing I'm going to do in Robot C is I'm going to create a new file right here where it says new file. Okay. And before I do any coding, I need to tell it where my motors are. So I'm going to go right here where it says motor and sensor setup. And for port 1, on my brain, for port 1, I've got it as the left motor. So I'm going to name it left motor. And then I'm going to choose the type of motor. Now, if you look on the motor, it'll tell you that, now in my case, I have a VEX 393 motor. Okay, now the right motor is port 10. So I'm going to go right motor. And it's also a VEX 393 motor. Now the, the VEX arm is port 2, so I'm going to call this arm. And it's a 393. And on port 3 is the clock. So I'm naming what I want the computer to recognize as my motor commands. And I click apply. And so then the program sees up here, it says, OK. When, when the human enters left motor, then I'm gonna move this individual motor. When they type arm, I'll move the arm, claw, and right motor. So now what we wanna do is we want, simply we want the, the VEX um, robot to move forward for 10 seconds. That's what we want. So I'm gonna choose set motor, and I'm gonna, I want the left motor to move at a speed of 50 and I want to set motor and I want the right motor to move at a speed of 50. But now if I leave it like this, 
what's going to happen is the left motor will start moving at 50 and the right motor will start moving at 50 but I haven't told it when to stop so now I'm going to say okay wait for 10 seconds and then what the computer is going to do is it's going to run this line of code this line of code simultaneously and then it's going to keep running them for 10 seconds before it goes to the next one and then here I'm going to say I want to stop the motor left motor and I want to stop the right motor so now what I have built out here is I'm telling these two lines of code are telling the left and right motor to engage and work for an infinite amount of time at a power of 50 then this line says, okay, wait, don't run the next line of code for 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, run these two line of codes. So it's going to run for 10 seconds, and then both motors are going to stop. Now, when you're ready to put it on your robot, you click compile program, and you got to save it. So I'm going to say this is the example for YouTube, and I'm going to save it. Now, if I had an error, it would tell me. So let's say instead of set motor, I had sat motor there. And then I click compile. You can see it shows me an X here and it says, hey, this line, there's something wrong. And I see, oh, I misspelled set. So I'm gonna rename it and then go compile program and I have no errors. And then I'm gonna plug in my robot and download it. All right, so now that I've got the code written on my laptop, the goal is to get the code to the VEX brain, right? And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first thing you've gotta do is turn on your robot brain, and then you're gonna take the USB cable, the orange USB cable that comes with the robot, and you're gonna plug it into the brain, right? So now if the VEX key is plugged in, you're gonna to have to take it out. Okay, so I'm gonna plug it in. All right, now, if it's the first time you've plugged it up, there's a button next to compile program called firmware download. So you need to click that firmware download and it'll take the firmware from the laptop and put it in the brain, okay? Once you've done that, you don't ever have to do it again or maybe do it every once in a, once per month just in case more new firmware is available. So you've already compiled your program, so the next thing you need to do is click where it says download to robot. So I'm gonna click download to robot and on the screen it's downloading it and then it gives me a button that says start. Now when I click start, watch the motors will start running. And they're gonna run for 10 seconds. Now the problem is, notice this one's going that way and this one's going that way. So I think, okay, well this one's going that direction and this one's going that direction, how can I fix that, right? So in my code, on one of the wheels, I need to change the, the 50 from positive to negative. And I changed from positive to negative 50. Let's run the program again and see which way they go. I'm gonna click compile. And then after I click compile, I'm gonna click download the robot. And it's downloading it right now to the robot. And then I'm gonna click start on the screen. And now you can see both motors. This one's running this way. And the, the brain's here, so this is the front of the robot. So they're both running forward, okay? Now, it doesn't help that I've got the robot tethered to the cable. I wanna actually run the program with the robot away from the cable, right? So the way you do that is not hard. So what you're gonna do again, is you're gonna click download the robot on, the, on VEX Robot C. So it's downloading it to the robot. But on the screen, you're not gonna click start, okay? Once the start appears, I'm gonna unplug it, and I'm gonna plug the VEXnet key in. Okay? And then I'm gonna find the remote. Now you can see my remote's not on, but the moment the remote comes on and it syncs, then the program will start, start running. All right, so here I am with the robot. I've downloaded the program. The key is in, the robot's on, but the remote's not on. As soon as I turn the remote on, you're gonna see the lights blinking, and when they turn green on there, then the program's gonna immediately start running. So there, it's finding it, finding it, and there it goes. And I'm not touching the remote, all I did was turn it on. And you see it's running forward for 10 seconds. 
So you can see the procedure is fairly easy. You plug the robot into the computer, you download the code, but you don't press start. You unplug it from the robot, right? And then you plug the VexNet key in, and then you turn the remote on. And the moment it syncs with the remote, it'll start running your program. But it usually takes just a second for the sync to happen. You just have to be patient and the lights will turn green and then it'll work. There it goes. So I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can comment. Also, if you would take a minute just to like and subscribe.